thank you this morning. We ask you to be with us in this service today. Let your anointing flow. We don't worship because we feel like we worship because he's worthy of our worship, right? He's worthy of our praise this morning. I don't know about you, but I don't want to stay the same way that I've always been. The same old, same old. In Jesus' name, God is worthy of my praise this morning. I hope that you feel his sweet touch this morning. In Jesus' name, worship with us as we see. If you couldn't, let's all stand and go go welcome somebody. Go talk to somebody that you've never talked to before. Shake their hand, hug their neck. Amen.
I've taught it. I've preached it all my life. I'm in my mid-fifties now. Jesus hasn't come yet. But I am more assured today than I was 35 or 40 years ago. Jesus come. I'm in the dressing room. And I'm just warming up. I'm going to tell you. I get a brother. If worship gets on your nerves here, don't go to heaven. Don't go. Don't go, man. You got a nervous breakdown. But I'm going to tell you. You wait for some folks. Blood washed. Sanctified by the Spirit. Justified by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Brother Crenshaw steps over. And that place of glory. Oh, my. You talking about the repair. Some things up. I'm talking about there's going to be dancing, you ain't going to stop it. There's going to be a holler, you ain't going to stop it. I tell you, I don't want to wait till then. I don't want to wait till the battle's over. That's the old song that says, don't wait till the battle's over. I'm sorry. I just can't have church. It's, but I'm stepping on my bottom lip. Talk <laughs> that you could to me. <laughs> Paul talked about the great hope. And they start talking about, I'm just warming up. Until I reach the other side. Woo! God help me. I've heard people say, well, if I just burn, burn this night down, if I just burn it, I'm going to be happy.
continue in the service. Sunday prayer. Do we have prayer? Seas be pleaded. Seas be pleaded. That means please be seated. Do we have prayer tonight? Uh, I think with everybody that prayed Saturday night, I think a lot of people are exhausted. Some are sick. Let's give everybody a break tonight. Okay, so there's no prayer tonight. Uh, so if you come and pray, it's going to be you and Jesus. Amen. That's okay. Uh, Wednesday, we're getting back to our regular hey. schedule. Yes, sir. Let me interject this real quick. Thank you for everyone that signed up. And my assumption is, is there's some that prayed during that time period that didn't sign up. And so I, uh, I felt pretty good. I'm a little on the warm side. Built in air conditioner over here. Just trying to be a blessing. If you can't come to church and have some fun, my Lord have mercy. But I uh, I want to thank all of you that, that prayed. I know there was prayer that went up at home. We had a good good group that came to the church. And I'm going to tell you, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, it wasn't just dead. I'm telling you, there were moments that waves of glory. Three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost was surging through this place. 
Amen. And I, I'm assuming that about 80 to 100 hours of prayer went up Friday night, Saturday morning, collectively. Amen. I believe God heard. I really do. I believe God heard. And I believe that we're going to see the results of that dedication. So thank you again. Amen. We've got a we've got a miracle right here sitting here because of what prayer I do. I'm so glad to see you brothers in this house this morning. You love here, brother. We're glad you're here. And we want God to give you everything we've got for you. Amen. 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 I just want to tell you thanks from the bottom of my heart. It's it's lonely when you're trying to pray by yourself. But it feels so good. Amen. To have comrades alongside of you. And I appreciate each one of you. It took time to go before the throne. Because we can't do it by ourselves. We don't have enough ability, have enough programs to do it without his anointing. But we, if we have this anointing where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and victory. Praise the Lord. It was, I wasn't here the whole night, but the time that I was here was impactful. It was powerful. Amen. Amen. So Wednesday, we're going to try to get back on our normal schedule. We'll have live groups at 7. Yes. Unless you're the oddball group, which was the warming group there at 7.30. Because they're, right they're a little extra. Amen. <laughs> Friday night. Everybody say Friday night with me. We're going to have a cornhole tournament here at the church for youth Friday night. It's a bing bag toss type tournament. It'll be fun. And it, it can be, uh, you don't have to be, you know, 12 to 18. Everybody can come and play. Uh, we'll just have a good time. We'll probably cook some hot dogs or, or something. We'll have a good time. So remember, 7 o'clock on Friday, cornhole tournament here at the church. Amen. Everybody say... Saturday, yes, sir. We got out this later. It's later in my announcements, brother. Come down. Uh, FLCA, that's our, our church school. We have a Valentine's raffle. The tickets are one dollar a piece right now, okay? And you can win up until the value in the basket is going to be well above three hundred dollars in value, maybe closer to five hundred by the time we get there. So it's one dollar per ticket. If you could help us out, this goes to a very good cause. Our church school, amen. Hey, there's nothing like training up a child in the way it should go, amen. And I want to make sure this church school stays here for the long, the long haul, amen. Uh, now, brother uh, Warman, Saturday, every Saturday, remember we have yes, sir. Yesterday we went to outreach. Um, ever, <laughs> sometimes when we do it, we have questions: Are we doing? Are we? Do, are we making any impact? Is there enough people? I said, Look what they did with the bread and the loaves. Look, look what Jesus did. I know that we're making an impact. Every single Saturday, there's at least one to two souls that we either have gotten a Bible study together and we're doing it, or they actually come in this place. So there's an impact. So. Yesterday we went on outreach and God led us to two different people and I'm telling you, when we came, actually my husband was there and then when we walked by he grabbed me and Sister Tanya, he was already having church at two different places before we got there. But one of the things that I, I want to say, the last house, very last house we went to, we ended up hitting the UPC people, okay? And this man has older, he's lost a leg, he feels like he cannot do anything for God because of his age. So we end up at his door, and we knocked, and we invited him to church. The young boy was the uh, grandson came to the door. Um, and then I leaned in. I seen an apostolic woman. I said, there's that apostolic woman. So we get to talking. We walk in, and then my husband walks in. Long story short, this man, my husband had already talked to the next door neighbors in front, and he was talking. she was talking about how the neighbors had just totally impacted them. That she's like, I know that they're, they're apostolic too, and man, they're just good people. And man, every time I see them, I want to go to church. And I thought, whoa. So this man that was there in this home that feels like God, he has nothing more to give God. My husband looked at right. him and said, Let me tell you something. Right. Your neighbors next to you, you're making an impact. Woo! God is still not done with you. And let me tell you, this man, 
28 years of outreach. No, he was never called an outreach pastor. He was never called an outreach bus pastor, anything. But you know what he did? He helped in the, the harvest. Hallelujah. 28 years of helping. You all have something to give. If you can be your at four, please get on your knees praying. And if you can, let's go together and win these souls. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The harvest is right, good thing. And don't forget Saturday, the youth group, everybody, the youth for hiking. We're going without reach this Saturday, man. At 4 o'clock Saturday. Rain or shine. Yes. Bring, bring underbrows. Of, amen. Also, we have cop copies. Before I get, we have copies of the Bible study that was given uh, Wednesday night into his marvelous life. We're going to put them in the foyer after service. And if you want a copy or two, uh, take a copy or two. Don't take 20 if you're not going to use them, though. Yeah. Sister Pat, she was gracious enough to, to supply those for us. And I know that was, you know, that was, that was awesome. So we don't want to waste them. Yes. O only take one if you intend to teach it. Right. right? Uh, if you want a copy of one, we can probably get you an e-copy if you want one for yourself. Right. But if you want to teach it. Take some. That's the way we're gonna we're gonna bring people into his marvelous light. Amen. If I could have Brother Payne and Brother Cook come for the offering. I love you, Jesus. They look good this morning, don't they? Wonderful. Yes, sir. Wonderful ushers here. I have a note here that we need to have prayer for Brother Bryce. He is uh, I don't know all the details, but we need to pray for him. And before I forget, Brother Tinker is going to be here Wednesday, and I'm not sure of all the details, 9 to 11, and uh, he's bringing the ROTC program, and if you don't have work or if you're not busy, 9 to 11, be here for that, it'll be special, uh, I, I'm going to try to be here, give him a hard time, 9 to 11, amen, uh, in Jesus' name, don't forget Brother brother Bryce, he needs a, a touch from the Lord, and any other needs, I know we've got some people that are sick today, uh, any other needs? Jenny's grandmother, uh, make it known by the uplifted hand. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a great and mighty God. Amen. He can He can do more in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, than we can do in a lifetime. In Jesus' name, let's pray for these needs and for this offering. Lord, we thank you today for the sweet touch that we feel. Lord, I thank you today to be able to be in your presence once again. God, I ask that you would. Let your virtue flow to each family that's associated with this church, oh God. Give them strength, uplift them, oh God. Minister to them. Let your anointing flow in a way they get to feel. God, we ask that you would touch Brother Bryce and Mama Lou. Give them what they need today. God, I ask that you would touch this offering. Multiply it to meet the needs of your body. Lord, we'll be careful to give you praise. We'll be careful to give you all the glory. Lord, you are not... You are worthy of my praise and I want to give it to you this morning. Let's give him a hand clap of praise while they take up this offer. God has been good to us. I'll never understand the way he works. I'll never understand his mercy but I want to take time to give him all of my praise.
fully get that understanding of God. And he, he doesn't, he's not needy like we are. But I want you to think about it from this angle. Do you ever get sad? Do you ever get upset? Do you ever have joy? Do you ever laugh sometimes? Think about where all of the emotions that we experience come from. They come from Him. And I, I found myself the other night, and I know that you say, well, that's kind of weird. But I actually found myself telling the Lord, I'm really sorry. For sometimes the way I treat Him. Have you ever had somebody just kind of walk by you, act like you wasn't even hardly there? Well, you say, well, I'm tough. I got thick skin. I can handle it. Well, that's probably the first sign you need to go to the altar. Because somewhere deep down inside, that stung a little bit. If we'll just be honest with ourselves. Or you did something good for somebody. You never got even a text saying thank you. It's like they just didn't matter. Whether an oversight on purpose, whatever. It's still stung. It's still hurt. Now, am I down here where we're living? Can you imagine the multitude times over? If we're that emotional and we have those kind of feelings. Have you ever thought about how emotional, how many feelings he has. And I, 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 maybe I'm just weird that way, but that's part of my thinking when I come into his house to worship. Is I come into his house and it's buffet time for me. God, I want this, I want that. I need you to touch this, I need you to touch that. God, would you give me this, would you give me that? Hey, hey, God, would you do this and that? Hey, I need you to work this out. Hey, God, I need you. He's going. I wonder as they begin to sing that song, if just if just for one minute we could forget about everything tomorrow, lunch today, the job, our worries, our hurts, our pains, and we all have. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for the times that I've treated you like you were just a just a hobby. Could you close your eyes and slip your hand up in the air? Just recognize him as the great eye. Just let him know how you feel about it. Lord, we love you this morning. We don't want to take you for granted. We don't want to take your mercy for granted. God, we don't want to take your forgiveness for granted. Lord, we don't want to take, God, your willingness to continue to work on us. God, we know you don't have to have us. You know you, we understand you can be done with us tomorrow. Thank you for all of your mercy. We want to recognize your grace and your kindness. We just want to love you a little bit this morning, Lord. For you are worthy. Worthy is so happy. Worthy is so happy. Hallelujah. Are you Lord God Almighty? Hallelujah. Worthy is the man. Worthy is the man. Worthy is the man. You are holy. 
So I have no doubt God is with us today. It was about probably 3.30 when my eyes popped open. And he had given me the main idea of the message. He had given me the title. And as soon as my eyes popped open, he gave me the scripture setting. And so uh, sometimes you step behind the pulpit and you're just trusting God that, Lord, I, I'm trusting you that I got what your people need today. But I am convinced beyond any shadow of a doubt, God wants to talk to us today. And I'm telling you, this is, this is a message. I wouldn't be texting. I wouldn't be writing. I wouldn't be laughing. I wouldn't be thinking about tomorrow. I wouldn't be worried about my problems. I'm telling you, God wants to talk to us and he wants to draw us close to him. And he wants to protect some most precious things in our lives. Amen. If I've ever been convinced that God desires to speak to us, I'm convinced today I want to talk, I want to turn your attention to 2 Kings chapter 20. And uh, I want to give you, I want to give you what God gave me in a dream. It's really incredible to wake up and hear, hear the message being preached to you in a dream. Have a title in a dream. It was quite an experience. And then I woke up probably about 3.30 and it was probably about 6.30 before the Lord was done with me, roughing, giving me the rough draft of this message. So I want to give you what God gave me. I'm not preaching this for any other reason than to deliver to you what I am convinced God delivered to, from, to me from the throne. So we're going to look at 2 Kings chapter 20, starting at verse 12. Amen. It's good to see you in God's house this morning. No place I'd rather be. Verse 12. At that time, Barodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present. Sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah. For he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah, say, hearkened, hearkened unto them. These strange people from Babylon, Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices, the precious ointment and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen? There's nothing among my treasures. I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the day is come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord, which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be in, thy, in my days? After all of that, isn't it amazing in verse 19? Instead of being worried about all he exposed out of the king's house, out of God's house, the godly things that he exposed to the enemy, 
his only request was, Lord, hey, hey, prophet, let God touch me. Let me be fine. Don't worry about everybody else or all those that follow me. Just let me be fine. How selfish of Ezekiel. I want to turn your attention back up of, of Hezekiah. I want to turn your attention back to 13. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things. And this is what the Lord gave me. Keep the enemy away from your holy things. Keep the enemy away from your holy things. Brother Chapman, would you pray? Thank you for your presence. Uh, God, we know that your spirit is here, Lord. Thank you for anointing the Lord. God, open our ears and ears and hear that. Anoint your messenger, Lord. Give you praise and glory. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Friendly greetings are always nice to receive. Everybody likes to get a friendly greeting. Especially when you're down, especially when maybe you're struggling. It's nice to have a friend come around and pat you on the back and give you a kind word. Expressions of sympathy from the king of Babylon was very exciting to Hezekiah. I've got the king of Babylon being kind to me. He's reaching out to me. I've been sick. I've been down. I've been struggling. And here this great nobleman is reaching out to me. It had to have been exhilarating to the flesh to have a king call you and send letters and Send gifts reaching out to you. Amen. We, we all want to be, to a degree, independent and think we are. But you let some high noble person send you a letter. Somewhere deep down it's going to strike a card that kind of feels good. Oh, I got, am I right? I got a letter from this dignitary that invited me to his office. Kind of make you feel good, wouldn't it? Well, Hezekiah got a king and gifts, a uh, letter and gifts from the king of Babylon. And here he is down, and this noble man is reaching out to him. Can I tell you, the world will always appear to be giving you camaraderie and a soft shoulder of sympathy to lament. Hear what I'm saying? The hypocrites in the church, the few that there are, are. How hard serving the Lord is, let me tell you something. I'd rather throw my hat into the ring of God's people and God's church. There may be a few that you can point to and say, well, they're hypocrites, therefore I'm not going to serve God. Let me tell you, the world's full of hypocrites. They say one thing and do something else. Amen. This world is not our comrade nor our friend. Amen. They will turn on you in a heartbeat. Amen. When they use you up and spit you out, they will they will leave you a wreck of the person you used to be. I want to throw my hat in with the things of God. For therein lies truth. Amen. The things of God are truth and life and hope for eternity. I want to stay on the good ship of Zion. Amen. Because one of these days, that old ship's going sailing. Amen. And I don't care what somebody did, somebody said, stab a knife in my back, but God give me the grace and the strength to stand up, stand strong, be faithful, keep my eyes on the cross, keep my eyes on the horizon, and march on. This world is not my home. In the streets of Jerusalem, we're seeing strange men from Babylon carrying gifts and inquiring, where's Ezekiel? <laughs> Let me tell you, there's some strange stuff happening in this world today. The word strange in the Bible is about, is in the Bible about 210 times. And in most instances, it references strange gods, strange doctrines, strange associations. Amen. Let me tell you something. It may appear that this world is playing nice. It may appear this world is giving you gifts. It may appear that this is a cool way to go. It may appear that camaraderie with the world is the, the way to go. But let me tell you, when it's all said and done, this world will leave you stripped of the sacred things of God. 
Amen. Ezekiel thought he was doing a big deal. Getting to be buddies with the king of Babylon. But when it was all over, all the holy things of God were stripped out of the temple. Amen. And he was at enmity with God. Our text says Hezekiah was sick. Notice. Bureau Doc Baladan began to entice Ezekiel when he was weak, when he was discouraged, when he was hurting, when he was struggling. You better be careful. I'm telling you, God gave me this for somebody or multiple. Be careful when you get down and discouraged. Don't open your mind to every little thing. Don't reach every little thing that soothes it. Amen. Sometimes we just have to barrel through the hurts and the pains. That old-fashioned altar. Don't look into the world to soothe your pain. Because if you do, they will strip everything that you ever thought you had from you. They'll carry away the sacred things and leave you with very, very little. Nero Doc Baladan was part of a family in, ba in, in Babylon that was out of worshipers. They worshiped Baal. They did not serve the one true living God, Jehovah. And here he's allowing these people, these strange people, to get up close to him and whisper in his ear. Yeah. Hey, you better not let the world whisper in your ear. You better not let the world suggest to you an easy path. And you better not let the world suggest to you that there's an easier way and justify laying down the old landmarks. Justify walking that green pretty road. Amen. It's still the old dusty road to Calvary. It's still the old cobblestone dusty road to Golgotha that's going to get us there. It's still the old paths, the old ways, the old truths. This book never changes. Truth never changes. God's word never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Oh, I wish somebody would help me this morning. Don't look across the fence to something more green. It's a lie. Hallelujah. 2 Chronicles 32 31 gives us a chilling insight to the dangerous game that Ezekiel was playing with the world. However, when ambassadors arrived from Babylon, listen to this, to ask about the remarkable events that had taken place, God withdrew from Hezekiah. Don't think you've got God on a leash. Got God in a bag. And you can treat him any way you want to. Bounce in and out of his house. Bounce in and out of his presence. Hey man, just take it for granted. Hey man, God is God and God alone. Amen. He does things on his timetable and in his ways and in his orders. Amen. It's me that's got to line up with him. It's me that's got to walk his paths. It's me that's got to talk his talk. It's me that's got to walk his walk. It's me that's got to do it his way. God withdrew from Hezekiah. The Bible says in order to test him, this is the word of God, and see what was really in his heart. Did you know God knows every heart? That's right. Yeah. He knows it intricately better than we know our heart ourselves. And he knows even right now. The ones that's under my voice right now. He knows where your heart is. Are you serving him because you're sold out? He's everything. Amen. You're not looking for another. You're not looking for some new faint day away. You're hungry for the old past. The old anointing. The old unction. Amen. The old time unction and power of the Holy Ghost. Fire from off the altar. Or are you just going through the motions to appease your conscience? My, my, my. That's good. At some point. At some point in your life. God will test you. To see what's really in your heart. That's good. You will. 
Or you want that thing more than you want me? Right. Are you willing to go for that thing and lay down my truths? Are you willing to justify laying down the old landmarks, your old convictions, your old ways, the things you used to believe? Are you willing? Oh, I know this is not popular. I preach to a quiet crowd. That's all right. I gotta get. I gotta preach what God gave me. Are you willing? Are you willing to lay down those whole convictions because you want that thing so bad? You want that association so bad. You want that friendship so bad. You want that person so bad. You want that situation so bad that you're willing to compromise even the holy and righteous and pure things of God. My God, my God, my God. We'll either be a God chaser or we'll be a world chaser. Can't be in between. Can't serve God or mammon one way or the other. Amen. People justify thinking I'm going to get in the mushy middle. There's no such thing. There's no mushy middle. I'm either on fire in the Holy Ghost and I've got my lamp full and burning brightly or I'm the one that's out searching for an empty lamp. Amen. The bridegroom's coming and he knows exactly where each one of us is at. He knows every heart that's in this house. He knows where each one's at. Am I just a half-hearted, half-baked thing? that they play with just a, a hobby that they get around to maybe one time a week or have I everything and they're all in all amen somebody said Jesus I want you to be everything oh God Hezekiah remember the word hearken Hezekiah hearkened to the men of this world the Hebrew word for hearken is Shammah Meaning to listen carefully to, to hear and obey. Dear Jesus. What do you hear in the Spirit today? What can you hear in the Spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, help us, God. Help us, God. So you can only, you can only hear a heartbeat. You're up close enough. True. 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 You're only going to hear that still small voice if you're close enough to Jesus. My God. But if that event, that association, that thing, whatever. It's dragging you into places and things and to get you where those things are louder than the still small voice of God. I'm telling you, like Ezekiel, God will step away from you. It's a staggering, staggering piece of scripture. God stepped away from him. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't want God to have to test me that way. I don't want to look up one day. And God has stepped away from me. To see what's in my heart. Because if I lose the influence of God being in my life. You know what will happen? Just like he did. I'll start hearing the sound. Of the world. When God steps back. The sound of the world gets louder. And louder. And louder. Amen. The things of this world begin to get more illuminated and more beautiful and more appealing. And I begin to reach for the things of this world. That's right. That's real. Can we pray a moment? Mm. Hezekiah was so excited that a worldly king would reach out to him and befriend him that he opened himself up to Babylon. 
Many look over the fence. I'm just getting off my chest what God gave me, and I'm telling you, this came in a dream, and I woke up early in the Saturday morning. I got to get it off of me. Many look over the fence and desire the approval of this world. <clears throat> oh, those silly forefathers. It was ridiculous some of the things. I'm going to tell you, them old men got some stuff Come in on. prayer. <laughs> those old men prayed more than I probably will ever pray. Amen. They paved, paved a path for me to trod. Oh, the old ways, the old paths. Amen. Some of them old people. That we look on in disdain sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what the way they did, brother. I'll tell you, they laid down, they played the path. They made it easy for us. Amen. I thank God for our forefathers. I they may not always did everything just right. They may have been a little rough around the edges and maybe they were a little bit abrasive. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. They held true to this word of God. They stayed faithful. They stayed true. Amen. They would never capitulate to all the baloney that's going on in our world. All of this woke society and churches laying down everything and going through the motions. They sought the fire from off the altar. James gives us a stern word about being cozy with this world. He said, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. It's not my words. It's God's word, but I got to get it off my heart. I got to tell you, being friends with this world it's a dangerous thing. The Greek for the word enmity is ekthra. It means to become, this is mind blowing, become opposition to. Oh, I'm going to play close to the world. I'm going to pick up things from the world. Oh, I'm just going to do this a little bit. I'm just going to do that a little bit. First of all, what's happening is your conscience is becoming seared with a hot iron. You're beginning to justify things you used to would never justify away with. The problem is the Bible says you'll believe a lie and be damned. I'm just preaching the book. I gotta preach what God's given me. Amen. We can't believe a lie and be damned. Amen. If we begin to believe anything, amen, everything will overtake us. There's just some things we gotta hold fast to. We cannot be friends with this world and be friends with God. He will walk away. You know what I'm telling you? He will walk away. There's some places he's not going to walk into with you. There's some places he's not going to go with you. When you walk into those places, he walks out. Can I just, I, I just got to, I'm not even going to ask. I got to preach the way God gave it to me because I got to sleep tonight. You say, well, I'll just, I'll just go here and I'll just I'll just get with these people and kind of do this. God will understand. No, he won't, he won't understand. He won't understand. He will walk away. Amen. You will go into those places and do those things and justify those things away by yourself. God left this man. Amen. To test and see where his heart is. We're either going to pass the test or we're going to reach into the world and justify all the things that the world is trying to get us to justify. Jesus said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Amen. God desires a holy and a peculiar and a righteous and an upright people separated from this world, in the world, but not of the world. Not looking like the world, talking like the world, acting like the world, dressing like the world, listening to the world, thinking like the world, wearing what the world wears. Listen to what the world listens to. Go into the places that are carnal. Amen. God wants us to be holy. And he wants us to come into his presence. A holy people. Otherwise he will walk away. And you don't want to get to a place, friend, where God's blessings, his hand of blessing, removes off of you and your family. No matter how hard we try to justify friendship with the world, you can 
be assured that when it's all finished, the holy things of God will be gone. They'll be gone. Somebody you haven't been praying like you need to. Somebody you've been letting your shield of faith hang low. Somebody's been looking across the fence. Maybe back in the world. Maybe the garlic and the leeches are better. Maybe I can go back. And it'll be good. Somebody your first love has been getting cold and stale. That first place. Keep the enemy away from your holy things. Would you slip your hand up in there and ask the Lord right now, God, take me back. Take me back to that place where I first knew you. Take me back to that place of my first love. Take me back, Lord, to that place where my convictions were strong. And I, I just, Lord, wanted to serve you no matter what it cost. I wanted to give you everything. No reservations, no hesitations. Not arguing things away, Lord, of your spirit. In our text, we see that Hezekiah Abuse God's treasures to gratify his own lusts and desires until he lost it all. We can't play with the ways of this world or the ways of this world's religious system. See, on this battle we've got on our hands, we're not dealing with just the world. That'd be tough enough. Because this old flesh is drawn to the world. It loves sin. It loves the easy path. It likes the easy way. This old flesh doesn't like the way of the cross. It's too bloody. It's too hard. It's too difficult. But there's another battle. The Bible calls it in the last day the spirit of the age. The spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. The Bible talks about the false prophet that would walk the face of the earth. The spirit of the false prophet that would walk the face of the earth. The world's religious system will be in alliance with the Antichrist himself. Matthew 7, 15, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Let me tell you, there's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's not 10,000 different ways to get to heaven. There's not 10,000 different paths to get to heaven. Hey man, it's a fallacy and a lie from the pits of hell. You go your way and I'll go mine. No, sir. This book spells it out. There's one way to heaven, and it's this way. Hey man, there's one way to please God, and it's this way. It's of no private interpretation. It's not, not up to me to justify it away. It's not up to me to say how it is. It's not up to me to claim how it's going to be. But I've got to line up with it. This doesn't have to line up with me. I've got to line up with this. God doesn't have to do it my way. I've got to do it his way. God doesn't have to pitch late to me. I've got to walk with him. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter how I justify it. There's just some old absolute truths that if I don't hold fast to them, I will never step on the streets of gold. My, 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 my. Oh, God. If you try to compromise with this world, you'll wake up one day. God's anointing and His holiness will be gone. Those are words from heaven. I'm telling you right now. 
God woke me up. God woke me up. The anointing will be gone. His holiness will be gone. The beautiful ways of God will be gone. And there'll only be a shadow of what used to be. Hezekiah desired friendship with Babylon. Sadly, he'd have it, but he'd get it in a way that he never, ever dreamed of. Oh, but Chris, I can, I can get by with that. Just, I'll look the other way. I, I, I can go to that place and God, God won't say it. I, I can listen to that. God will understand. I can yeah, I can do it my way on this, this particular situation. I'll, I'll do it my way and God will get over it. He'll understand. I, 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 can, I can watch that on the computer by myself when it's just me. God, God will get it. Let me tell you the end result, my dear friend. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And let's see with this world will leave you spiritually bankrupt. Yeah. Hear me. And the scary part about spiritual bankruptcy is this. The Bible says they'll have their conscience seared with a hot iron. They'll begin to justify things they never would have justified years ago. But here's the scary part. Now that their conscience is seared, they justified and justify the justification. When you justify the justification, you put yourself into a place where God says, okay, all right, you got this yourself. I'm going to back off. I'm telling you, oh God, oh God. Oh God of heaven. Jesus is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. If we're going to be ready, we can't be playing with this world. We got to get as far away from the Oh, if it looks like that, like talks like, even thinks like this world. Get away from it. When in doubt, leave it out. If there's any question, just don't do it. Amen. Tell you say, well, I don't want to be weird. Jesus said, call us to be a peculiar people. Hey, he doesn't mean, that text does not mean, that word doesn't mean, mean to walk around like a weirdo. That peculiar, peculiar means to be a called out one, a separated one, one that doesn't look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, go to the places of the world, think like the world, embrace the world, let the world into the enemy, the enemy into your camp, let the world come in and look at your stuff. Amen. Get the world out. Amen. Don't let the enemy near the precious things of God. That's right. Spiritual bankruptcy is always the end of a friendship with its world. As, I, as the Lord gave me this, it staggered me. In the text. When you allow the enemy to take away the riches of God's ways, hear me. When the enemy takes away the riches of God's ways in your life. Oh, Hezekiah. Ezekiel, how selfish. Oh, bless me. Bless, bless me. Don't worry about everybody else. Just, I messed up, but oh, take care of me. How selfish. Do you not realize all? Oh, but the posterity is coming behind you. What you destroyed coming up behind you. Right. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah told Ezekiel. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be units in the palace of the king of Babylon. The place where Baal is worshipped. The place where the world is embraced. 
the place where the world is justified. I'm telling you, if you don't think God's serious about this stuff, His holiness is so far beyond our understanding. He does not want us to play with this world, even, even get close to this world. He calls it His enemy. You want to know why Calvary was so bloody and so nasty? And why blood flew everywhere and skin and flesh flew everywhere? Why it was such a horrendous sight? Because it's just a small visible manifestation of how God feels about sin. About His people. Trying to play nice with this world and its system. Because He played around with his old convictions. Because he played around with the old past. Because he played around with God's truth and God's holiness. He lost his kids and generations of grandkids to follow to Babylon. I didn't make this up. I didn't make it up. For generations to come. Will those that follow you and I. Will they hear stories. They walked in the spirit. They didn't walk after the flesh. They walked in the spirit. They faithfully worshiped God. In the house of God. Outside of the house of God. 24-7. They walked in a spirit of worship and prayer. Seeking the face of God. They maintained a life separated. From this world. They were a defender of the gospel. Except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. They stood with Peter when Peter said repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and he shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost. They still held fast to hear old Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They stood firm on Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness with that which no man shall see God. They still believed. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. If you let the enemy close, Hezekiah, if you let the enemy close, they're going to come in. And all the precious things that God had given you, all the precious things of God in your house, in your soul, in the temple. See, Hezekiah let them get so close. They came in. They got the precious things out of his house. You see, what we do at home that just affect our home. They also got the holy things out of the temple. If we lay it down at home, It'll be laid down as a church. That's what's happening to the church as a whole. All across the world, people are laying the holy things of God down. And you wonder why Satanism is the number one fastest growing belief system in the world? It's because there's so many that profess Christianity. The Bible says in the last days they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And the reason they don't have any power is because they put the enemy into the camp and they laid all the things, the holy things aside yeah. and they're just playing with the world. Playing with the things of this world. God says, fine. Do it by yourself. Do it alone since you're so smart. Do it by yourself. That's right. Old convictions that used to be alive and strong now dead. So the church becomes more worldly. The old paths of the gospel now justified 
It's no longer needful because we know how to do church now. Sister Chapman, if you come. come on. Jesus is coming soon. It's time to keep the enemy away from your holy things. If there's anybody in this house, God's talked to you, and you want to make sure there's some walls erected against the holy things in your life, some walls built up high against the enemy. But Jacob, if you turn the house lights down, please. Maybe somebody would go like to go back to the old place that you first first met Jesus. Maybe you'd like to pick up some things again. I'm not going to belabor it. I'm not going to beg. But if you'd like to renew your first love, the altar's open.
delivered my soul. I would that we were all on our face and out to God. Because he's coming. You don't have the Holy Ghost, dear friend. I wouldn't leave this place without receiving the Holy Ghost. The things of God have become secondary, or just fit them in your schedule. I had to make a determination today. God, you fixed to be everything, everything. call out to him with me again. Let's reach for him. Amen. I, I just can't get away from the feeling that I was trying so hard to wait someone, reach to someone. Sadly, messages like this don't stir us like they used to years ago. We've become rich, content, but oh God, I'm telling you, the Lord, I don't think he woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. He took three, three and a half hours of my time that morning to give me this. Oh, come on God's people, let's reach out to him. Let's don't let this moment just pass us by.
prophets felt the unction of God's Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Take me back. Take me back, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 